Hi everyone, this is Vivian for Purple Martin Lettering. Today I am going to do a quick demo on how I do masking. And I have this photo of my sunglasses that I think might go well there. But as you can see, this photo is all in one layer. Oh, there's, it's, it's a flat photo. So now, right now it's just one layer. Um, the, the white background is not separate. So I, if I just put this picture in, you know, because the background is a different color, I can show you if I copy this photo and I put in the middle of this layer, it won't work. It will have this different because it's not really a pure white here. So I have to cut out the sunglasses in order to make it look uh, like it's sitting on my Instagram feed. So first of all, I would do, I would slightly adjust this photo, mm, kind of, just a little bit. Because I already did most of the photo, like a color and lighting adjusting in Lightroom. So I'm not going to do too much here, especially on this particular object, my sunglasses, it's white. So if I, I want to keep, I still want to see the difference between the white sunglasses and the, you know, this, this white cardboard that's sitting on. Okay. So I'm just lighting this picture up a little bit. Uh, and I'm pretty happy that, so I'm just gonna, you know, commit to that change. And the next thing I'm going to do is to make a cotton duplicate of it. So I can just hit duplicate layer and um, I'm not gonna bother naming it. And now that I have more layers, I wanna make sure I save this file first uh, as, a, as a Photoshop file. So I'm going to save as single item three. I'm just gonna do white sunglasses and I'm gonna do a Photoshop file. Okay. So now the fun part begin is to use to the pen tool to mask. I kind of the same idea like cutting out the shape of the sunglasses and um, pen tool really does take a while to learn, <laughs> at least for me. But it's it's the best way to do masking. Um, there are other quicker ways, depending on what type of uh, work you're you doing. But since um, I want to be able to reuse this object and to have um, pretty clean cutout, I'm gonna I'm going to use the pen tool to uh, draw out follow the edge of this shape. And so what I'm going to do is follow the shape of the sunglasses and uh, not worry about the shadow for now. Pen tool, um, it's just you drawing dots and then you're connecting, <clears throat> you'll be connecting uh, these dots. And then once your mouse, you know, go closer to your big initial point, it will um, enclose it and create an uh, enclosed shape. Or if you click and drag with your mouse, you got these handles. And these handles are kind of like tangents for a curve, if you remember your high school math. So how the angle of it is how you will uh, change the curvature and you can create an S shape or a C shape, you know, pretty much it's just S and C. That's what curves are. And the stronger you pull, the tighter the, the curve, the more strength it has. So if this point, I, I pull the handle really far away. So the, the curve is much, uh, what you call that? What do you would call this? Much stronger <laughs> than this one. And if you um, move, if you hold on while you still have the pen tool activated, you hold on to the command key on the Mac, you get this white arrow, then you can adjust the, the handle and the angle and you adjust on both sides. Only the angle, not the strings. <clears throat> if you want to adjust the strength, you have to, you know, do it side by side, one side first and the other. But if you hold down to the option key, you get to do it just one one side. So your um, your curvature is going to not be smooth because your tangent had this sudden um, change. 
Okay. So it's all going to be confusing when you're first using it. But uh, I promise, the more you use it, the better you'll get. <laughs> Just like many things in life. So I'm going to do start sort of uh, in the clockwise uh, fashion uh, order because I like I, I'm used to dragging my handle. Um, it's just the way I drag my handle. So working clockwise makes more sense to me. But you know, it's I don't. It's just me. And. I like to soar, like I like to adjust the handle as I go. But I also know some people they like to plot out all the general point and then come back to refine it. I, I think I do a combination of both. I like to get it pretty close and then later I'll come back to really fine tune and uh, make sure I really really get to the edge of it. And you can use command plus key while you're in the pen tool to zoom in. So here, this you know, I have this Y edge that makes a sharp turn. So I'm going to hold down to the Alt key, and then to change the tangent, therefore um, change the direction of my curve. And I know when I first started using the pen tool, I, I was always confused on where to drop the point. Where do I, um, you know, add a new point? And I think the rule of thumb is to, if you have an S shape, or um, every time you have an up and down, you have a curve, you want to, before it changes direction, there's always a pen point. <laughs> And also, if you hold on to the command key and then, but then your mouse is in the in the point itself, you can move this point. You can adjust it. So if you're not in, you're not really commit committing this as you're drawing. So 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 just just keep on uh, adjusting the handles and then add more points. So I think watching me like do this is kind of boring. So I'm going to fast forward. <laughs> so I think I can close up this shape. And what I'm going to do is to move my mouse closer to this or the first point um, and sometimes like when you close it up it does you know it does it give you a little bit of trouble but um, but we can always come back and adjust the handle to and hmm, I think maybe I will need another dot and if you need to you know feel free like to move the point around just because you plot it down doesn't mean you're married to it. To go back and just to adjust some of the curvature, look around and to see. I like to make my points a little even closer. If I have to choose between, because you know, with the pixel, is there you can't really draw this jacket line, uh, and also nobody's gonna see this jacket line when when things are real, zoom out. But you do sometimes get places where you have this, where you have this you know white edge. So I'm trying to cut out or be as close as I can to the object. 
and then don't forget like this guy this sunglasses also has a you know we have a opening here that's part of the table that we don't want so there i have this blue line that is the path that i drew i'm missing a little bit of i missed this so i'm gonna fix it if i want to um, because i have two paths two separate paths right now I, if i want to work on uh, the, this outer one i just uh, go near that path and then hold on to command key and click on the path then i can activate that path and since i want to add this tiny corner here i'm going to add a point here and then use the alt key to drag out uh, how I want it and then add another point right now I'm going to make a clipping pass I'm going to right click on the pass while I have the pass activated and say create vector mask okay because I have two layers the same image so it doesn't look much like it doesn't look like I did anything but if I uh, hide this then you see oh the background is gone Ooh, la, la. and in order to see things um just if in i want to make sure i really don't have any white edge around my sunglasses i'm going to create a uh, go to your adjustment layer and then create a solid color so any color you know you can depend on what object you want to you won't be able to tell the difference so if I make it darker, then then I can start to see, oh, there's a little bit of white shadow and the eye wire. So I, I'm just trying to um, see if I got a good shape out of this. It might look like I have white here, but I think that's the reflection of the frame. Hmm. So now we still need the shadow. Otherwise, um, it would look like you know, this glass is floating. And I'm going to change this color back to white. Double click on it. And so because my Instagram feed is set to white background. So I want to see how this will look um, when I put it in that Instagram feed file. So I'm going to move this solid color layer to the bottom. And I'm going to uh, turn on this, uh, the, dupl the second, the lower, the lower. I'm going to turn on this other layer I made and I'll create a smart object out of it. Convert to smart object. So I right click on this layer and then I say convert to smart object. So right now it's now it's smart object. I am going to double click on it. And I want to make this background even whiter now that I already have the glasses uh, cut out. So I'm going to do level, use a level adjustment layer. And with level adjustment layer, you have three eyedropper tool, which is to, you can sample image uh, color on the image. I usually, for uh, for this Instagram V, I usually, I, since I have a background, I want the shadow to eventually uh, fade into white. So I will use the eye, white eyedropper. I will use the eye, I will use the white eyedropper and click on the area where I want it to be white. So what it does is if I'm, when my mouse is clicking on area, I'm telling Photoshop that this should really be white. So Photoshop will adjust the whole color range of this photo to, to make that point white. So if I choose a really dark area and I'm clicking on it, it means I'm telling Photoshop, this looks great right now, but I want it to be white. Then the whole photo will be, you know, blown out because we're moving everything, you know, outside the, the spectrum. So I do not want to do that. So I think here is a good, um, this is a good, because eventually we're going to leave only the shaded area. So as, um, so I'm just, I'm only worried about here being white or even maybe that was, that's, that's too much. No, maybe I can get closer. Okay, so that's good. And then save this file and close it. I'm closing it. So back to the one that has two layer. And since I already made a smart object, I can use, uh, I'm going, 
I'm going to use a filter and then say uh, blur, Gaussian blur. I never know what's the proper way to pronounce it. Ga I hear people say Gaussian, Gaussian, Gaussian. <laughs> anyway, what language is that anyway? Is it English? I'm, as, you, as you can tell, I'm not, a, I'm not a native English speaker. So yeah, thanks for bearing with my bad English. Me no speak English. Okay, we're in the Gaussian, Gaussian blur uh, pop, uh, adjustment or option. And the blur radius is how much you want it to blur. So if I'm doing like way too much, then it becomes too smooth. And this is, uh, if you if you ever done any photo editing for weddings, then you use this a lot. You blur the heck out of people's face. So everybody looks like they have like immaculate face, you know, skin. So depending on the size of your photo, you want to adjust this. It really depends on your size, so I cannot tell you to follow exactly what I do or what I, the number I have. But the key is to keep your Instagram feed consistent. So however you set it now, you want to make sure it matches the rest of your Instagram feed. And because it's a smart object, you can always come back and adjust it. So if you think, oh, actually, that's not good enough, you can double click on the Gaussian blur and then you can adjust it more. I think, okay, maybe 1.8. Okay. So we still need to get rid of this white background. And this is how I do it. it I don't think I'm still trying to figure out a better way to do it, but so right now, this is how I do it. It works for me. Um, if you guys have other comments, please let me know. Is that I create a mask, but I cover it. I, cr I create a mask while holding on to alt. So I'm creating, I'm masking out everything of this photo. And I take, I take a brush, I take the brush tool, make sure I have a very, very uh, soft brush and with hardness to 0%. And I make the brush much bigger and then make sure your foreground is white so you're you're revealing you know this uh, this blurred uh, version of the photo. So I'm just by I'm just gonna reveal the, where the shadow is. So obviously in there and then also was there any shadow here? Yeah, shadow here. You can also use the drop shadow uh, tool to create a completely fake shadow in Photoshop. Or you can create a you know transparent layer and draw on your shadow. But um, I'm th this is this works for me now, so I, I'm fine with it. If you want to, if you don't know if you have done like got all the shadow, you can always hold down to shift while you're on the masking layer, and it kind of you know block the. Uh, mask then you can see oh what where the shadow um, are and then you can go back and color it back in so there's actually more shadow here okay hmm. and of course if, if you feel like you have revealed too much you can always use the X key to switch out your foreground foreground and background color or use this or use this corner arrow and then to like uh, color back in right using the black. I'm assuming most you know you have some sort of knowledge of masking. If not, you can definitely let me know, you know, in a, leave a comment and I will do my best to create another video, short video to show you what does masking do. <laughs> so now here we have uh, sunglasses that's, you know, cut out with some shadow. And yes, because it's a real photo shadow, so you will have the white instead of transparent um, pixel, but we can fix that uh, in the next steps. So I'm going to put this sunglasses into my Instagram feed. I'm thinking either here or here, um, and it's layer zero that I want in. 
both layers selected, duplicate layer. And I'm going to duplicate it into this other file, um, zero, zero arbor. And we come back to this file, you see this giant sunglasses here. First thing I'm going to do is to command G, is to make them into a group and give it a name. And I'm going to just um, shrink it down. And now you see the problem. The problem is that my shadow is white. It's really not transparent. So how do we fix that? Very simple. Select the layer that's the shadow. And you go to change it to multiply mode. Ta -da! Now it's in a, now it, you know, because it's, it has white in it. So whatever is white, when we do multiply, the white just kind of like go through, um, just kind of become transparent. And now I can uh, move the sunglasses to the places I want. So I'm going to place it here and I will move this notebook to the left. So there you have it. Um, let me just finish this anyway. I need the sunglasses and t to copy it to this artboard. So I'm going to right click and then copy on plus three. Again, if you don't know why, like what am I doing? Why does my artboard look so weird? You can refer to that. Um, the uh, tutorial on how to create seamless Instagram feed, which I have a link in the description below. So if you find this helpful, um, you can like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you find it confusing, please leave a comment as well. Let me know where is it confusing or uh, where am I not making sense. I will be glad to help and explain it more clearly. So thank you and have a good day.